So, in the last class, we had already seen definition of conditional probability and uh, how we define conditional probability. That means, uh, wh why we are going for conditional probability? Con due to some conditioning a statement or due to some kind of partial information in order to compute probability of an event or in order to update the probability of an event. So, if you are having an event, you can compute the probability of that event by using Kolmogoro approach of uh, computing all sample space, then event, then all those things uh, probability measure that we had already seen. Now, what is happening that, uh, now we come up with uh, based on our experience or based on other experience, uh, some partial information regarding the event. Okay. So, if uh, we come up with that partial information or conditioning, then that conditioning how it is helping to compute the probability, new probability. This would be new probability and it will be updated one. If your partial information is really in positive direction, then your conditional probability will be increased or if it is in positive in negative direction, that means wrong kind of partial information, then conditional probability will decrease. So, that kind of thing. So, the, that simply you can say that we are updating the probability of an event based on a partial information or conditioning. That is the conditional probability. Okay. So, we will do few example here. Like sim simple example is uh, three coin tosses. So, if you are tossing a coin three times or you are tossing three coin in together, both will have similar kind of sample space. Okay. Both are having similar, similar kind. How many sample spaces, how many element or outcome would be there in the uh, sample space? 2 to the power 3, that one is 8. Okay. So, in that experiment, that 3 coin toss is, uh, we are introducing events like A, it is talking about more head than tails come up. Number of heads are greater than number of tails. They are in that, uh, those are defining one event, one statement, this one. Another statement is first toss is head that one is defining B, second event B. First event is defined by more heads than tail comes comes up. Okay. So, this one is a statement. We have defined event by a statement. Every time I am saying same thing. Okay. We define uh, event by a statement. Now, we will try to see what kind of outcomes are there in the event. So, we have to go up to outcome level. So, if you go in outcome level, you have to find first sample space. So, what is the sample space in tossing three coin together? Sample space, this eight number of outcome would be there in the sample space. Okay. Head, 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 tail, head, all these kind of things, totally easily you can visualize. Okay. Now, once we are having idea of sample space, we will talk about what is A? What is A? What kind of element would be, what kind of outcome would be there in A? So, more heads than tail. So, this will come here. It is not visible. First will come. Uh, second will come, third will come and fourth will come. Total how many out outcomes there in A? 4. So, what is the probability of A? 4 by 8 and you can simplify it to 1 by 2. Now, if you come to B, uh, it is saying that first toss is head. Then what are the outcomes? Which outcome will come? The first outcome will come, the second outcome will come, the third outcome will come, the fourth outcome will come, others will not come. Just 4 outcomes in B, first 4 outcome in B, uh, those are in B. So, that is way, what is the probability of B? 4 by 8. So, in simplification it is 1 by 2. You got it. Now, if you talk about uh, intersection, joint occurrence of A and B, that we call it intersection. So, in uh, A intersection B, what are the outcomes? It is saying that, uh, saying it is satisfying uh, both a statement in together, that more heads than tails and the first toss is head. So, uh, okay. So, you have to look either in a or within B. You try to look and try to, uh, if you are uh, uh, saying that you are looking in B first, that means B is the partial information. And in B, you try to see uh, what are the outcome which is satisfying the uh, statement of A as well. Okay. So, that you will look for that. So, what are the common things? How many you will observe that? So, first three will be common. First three outcome in the sample space, it will be common in A and B. That means, if you are within B, then what are the outcome of A within B? First three outcomes. Okay. So, by default probability of A intersection B would be 3 by 8. So, we are trying to compute probability with respect to sample space. So, that is why these, these are the simple computation from hmm, uh, what uh, 
formula we had already seen that okay now we are coming with conditioning conditioning is saying that now i have been told that b is occurring first b is given partial b saying that uh, you have to compute the probability of a such that b is given that means it is it is noted that a uh, first toss is head if first it is given that first toss is head find the probability that uh, when you observe more head heads than tails when you observe okay so tell me how much a is happening within b three times a is happening outcome of uh, three a is happening three times in b so that's where three and how many times uh, b is happening that means how many outcomes are there four so simple answer would be three by four three by four is the answer directly you don't have to go for counting number of other outcomes or those kind of things directly you can come up with see how much a is happening within b so that also you can uh, there are various way to compute all this what i had discussed so one example now any question here till now it is very simple example is it clear to everyone now we will go to second example it is design competition um, problem it is taken again taken from that uh, mit book uh, that introduction to probability from adamitri batiskas and uh, john stiskis so here uh, question is coming like this way uh, a conservative design team is there we call it c and another team that we call it innovative design team and we denote it by n so there are two team okay and uh, uh, both team has been asked to separately design a new product within a month okay that the task is given to them now from the past experience we know that the probability that the team c is successful is 2 by 3 it is given information second information is the probability that team n is successful is 1 by 2 third information is that the probability that at least one team is successful is 3 by 4 so all these information are given or based on experience simply based on past experience you come up with all these three information now then oh, what oh, what is situation here if both team are successful then design of team n will be adopted there are two teams c and n so if both are successful in that case uh, design of team n will be uh, adopted okay now assume that exactly one successful design is produced one successful design is produced this is the conditioning conditioning situation okay this is the conditioning situation okay are you getting meaning 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 of this now okay and then what, uh, what is question find the probability that it was designed by team n you have to find this probability what is the probability that it is designed by team n and what is given given that exactly one team is successful so you can call this a statement b and second uh, the probability for which you are willing to compute that you can call it a so you have to compute probability of a given b so all about that here you have to come up with a and b how you do you know here what would be the output can you see the output formation of output can you see here you don't know what is the pattern of outcome how you can form output so first question will be that we have to construct output for this probabilistic experiment okay we have to construct output so here is the way of uh, constructing output so we are saying there are how many possible situation would be there both will be successful both would be failure uh, one would be successful another would be failure uh, like that so two options are there so this would be the possible outcomes so if both are successful then we represent that outcome by ss as first s is mean for c is successful second s is mean for n is successful then you talk about sf that means c is successful and n is failure n fails and like ff both fails and like uh, fs c fails n succeed so these are the outcome these are the picture of outcome what we are we have already seen so what is our sample space it is containing all these outcome this is the sample space okay now next what we have to uh, go uh, we have already identified the sample space now we will look to find what event event of interest so what are the event of interest and uh, we have to compute the corresponding probability so first event is what c is successful what first event c is successful so, so it will see when c is successful that means uh, it is coming in order pair now c is successful then c is successful in two case in ss and sf so that's where uh, these two are coming and second event we will define a2 uh, n is successful in a2 what will come n is successful ss and fs 
both outcome will be there okay and third we can come up with event like that uh, a3 like at least one team is successful what does it mean ss fs sf okay these possibilities are there so in total there are four and uh, if you try to uh, go to given information a b c then as per uh, uh, information a what does it say it say that uh, the probability that team c is successful when you are getting team c successful when s outcome is ss and sf are you getting meaning of this or not ss and sf and at the outcome le level all are mutually exclusive mutually exclusive also mutually disjoint as well mutually disjoint is as it is within mutually exclusive kind of thing in the last class i had mentioned that mutually, mutually disjoint means it is within mutually exclusive that i had mentioned okay so same thing it is given. so that's the probability of a1 is given to us at uh, that probability is 2 by 3 it means that a1 is containing ss and sf so sum of probability of these two outcome it would be 2 by 3 likewise a2 is talking about uh, probability that team n is successful when team n, n is successful when outcome is either ss or fs okay so same what is the probability of a2 it is 1 by 2 that means it is sum of uh, probability of ss and probability of fs so that's we got second equation and the third equation we are getting it uh, it is saying that at least uh, one team is successful what is the probability that at least one team is successful 3 by 4 at least one team is successful what does it mean when ss sf fs at least one team is successful so here what is the probability that probability probability of a3 is 3 by 4 so in this way we have formulated now how many uh, outcome you observe how many outcome you observe four outcome you got three equations three probability you got it so can you get the probability of each outcome can you get no because if you are having four unknown and you are having three equations can you find the solution of that it is just high school problem like if you are having two equation and two unknown then you are saying that we will get solution if it is solvable then you will get solution okay so here we are getting uh, three equation and four unknown so how will find the value so we have to come up with another equation in order to get a unique value so another equation is coming with respect to normalizing property of the sample space probability of a sample space is equal to 1 and what outcomes are there ss fs uh, sf and ff so sum of probability of those outcome it will sum to 1 now you are having four equation and four and no by solving all these four equation what you will get you will get probability of each outcome probability of ss is 5 by 12 probability of sf is 1 by 4 probability of ff is 1 by 4 probability of fs is 1 by 12 so all these you got it by solving so there is no any issue all these came from the question given question given and the information contained in the question so we got the uh, probability of each outcome now we will try to come up with uh, the event of interest those were for event of interest for informations given in order to utilize those now we are coming to find uh, event of information which are helping to compute the conditional probability so what are the event of uh, information so for a you can say that uh, it is talking about exactly one team one successful design is produced first uh, par, what is the partial information exactly one successful, one successful uh, design is produced okay what does it mean it is dealing with sf and fs sf and fs there you observe exactly one okay so that we call it the given partial information we denote it by b and what is the uh, event for which we will compute probability the event is the it is designed by team n okay that event we denote it by a a containing the outcome fs so now we are, everything is clear Uh, now we will compute the probability of a given b as per definition of as per definition of probability of conditional uh, conditional probability it is a intersection b i will correct it uh, clear it is a intersection probability of a intersection b divided by probability of b and so probability of uh, 
A is what? It, A is containing F S. Where is value of probability of F S? It is 1 by 12. And probability of B, what is probability B? It will be sum of probability of S F and F S. Probability of S F is, you can see it, 1 by 4. Probability of F S is 1 by 12. So 1 by 12 divided by 1 by 4 plus 1 by 12. And if you compute it, what is the final value? 1 by 4. This is the final value. Okay. So this way you have to compute. You have to use the inform given information in the question and then simplify it. Get the final solution. So that is the approach. Any question here? Okay, fine. I will pass this uh, slide to everyone through uh, Google Classroom. Again, you can. And one more thing. Again, I am getting uh, request from personal Gmail. I have told that use institute uh, email ID. Okay. So that would be feasible to add there in classroom. In classroom, I can't add personal Gmail. Gmail, it is not possible to add. It is not giving an option. Only institute email is possible to add. So try to access notes and uh, other things through institute email. Okay. Now we'll talk about the <coughs> first application of conditional probability. What is meaning of application? Then what about previous things? Whether whether they they were those were application or not? Those were problems, problems, a specific problems. Those are not generalizable in sense. Application means those happens to be making a general class. Like you can use that concept uh, as much as possible depends upon uh, such scenario of the application is involved. So that is meaning of application. Okay. So uh, it is going to form a formula. Application will it will take a, a specific form and that we will utilize time by time. Okay. So first application is multiplication rule. That's it. You are multiplying it. So multi multiplication rule. Uh, how we will talk about? So again we have to recall the definition of conditional probability and we have to restate it uh, in order to come up with multiplication rule. So what does it say? So in the definition of conditional probability, we have seen uh, an event as a our event of interest while second event B, we are saying that uh, it represent our prior information in order to compute the probability of A, prior, prior information or prior knowledge or, or various other things also you can call it, given information, given knowledge, something like that, you can call it like that. Okay. So uh, the prior information, it will in the process of computing conditional probability prior of event A, it is behaving like a new word, new sample space or you can call it another name, reduced sample space. That means it is not containing all the possible outcome, the partial information. It is con containing some possible uh, outcomes because it is partial information based on experience or some kind of source. Okay, so that's why you can call uh, the B is reduced sample space. Why it is reduced sample space? Because if you are computing probability of B given B, what would be that? It is very easy to see that in the definition. It is one. It would be probability of B intersection B divided by probability of B. What is probability of B intersection B? It is probability of B. So probability of B and in denominator also you are having probability of B. So both will cancel out. You are having one. So that's why B is also satisfying normalizing condition in the conditioning framework, not in unconditioned framework. In conditioned framework, B is satisfying normalizing condition. So also you can say that it is a new sample of space and that's an, uh, we call it reduced sample of space. Okay. So Conditional probability doesn't address the reason for prior information. If you are saying that if you are computing conditional probability, it is not uh, giving any reason of the prior information. Okay, okay. Only uh, how to accommodate it into probabilistic framework to compute updated probability of interest. That one is our interest. Thus, it is giving uh, idea to compute or it is computing the updated probability of given event. Updated probability of given event under the given scenario. So that is the things, okay, under the given scenario, okay. So if, you, if we are saying like that, then what is conditional probability? Is it a probability major? Definitely it is a probability major. Conditional probability is also a probability major. So if it is a probability major, then should it satisfy the all three axioms of probability major? The probability of uh, uh, empty set is zero, probability of sample of space is one, uh, both are coming together as a first exam. In second, probability of a proper sub, 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 subset or simply call it pro, uh, proper event. 
proper event it must be between 0 to 1 and uh, third property the additive property if uh, um, mutually joint case uh, just you have to sum the property in order to compute uh, union of the property of event so third so you, if you try to see i have already given formula of this one if you are willing to compute conditional property of phi given b what is it so as per definition of conditional property you can write property of phi intersection b divided by property of b and what is the intersection of property uh, what is the intersection intersection is phi intersection of phi with b is what phi and what is the property of phi zero so zero by something one more thing is the definition uh, clearly i haven't mentioned that property of b would be uh, through which you are introducing conditioning always having a non zero probability you should remember that if it, there is a zero probability you can't define conditional probability property of b must be greater than zero that means what does it mean that means the partial information or given information must contain some outcome it is not, not not like that it is not containing any outcome it must contain some outcome that is the scenario okay so probability of b must be greater than zero this scenario you can add it here okay it must be greater than zero so now you talk about uh, that normalizing condition yes okay you talk about normalizing condition what is the probability of sample of space given b so what would be that as put it the framework of definition of conditional probability so what would you it would be probability of omega intersection b divided by b what is the omega intersection b it is b why because b is within the omega so uh, it would be just probability of b divided by b and what is the value one so this we call it normalizing also if you don't go for that if you take probability of b given b what what does it give probability of b given b that also we had seen in the in one of previous slide we had already seen probability of b given b what what is that one so that we had already seen so that's why normalizing condition that we see okay you people if you are willing to uh, note down you can note down all these because best learning is coming when you are also noting down in parallel when you are writing something then also uh, it is processing through your mind and eyes okay so definitely some portion of information uh, will be there within you so that is so that is the writing is best practice while also listening okay uh, don't have need to write everything as a, a specific thing which i used to write it here okay you can write those things and later everything will be provided there in the classroom okay and now what about third property we call it additive property the first one is normalizing property second one is that probability of no uh, improper no, not call it proper uh, event proper event it must be between 0 and 1 and third one is additive property so if you are taking two event a and c are both are mutually disjoint then what is the probability of a union c given b it is just sum of probability of a given b and probability of c given b so again it is uh, uh, following the rule of additive additive property of probability measure so it is the conditional probability satisfying all three axioms of a probability measure and hence we can say that conditional probability is a probability measure and the this pro, this uh, these implication are very simple you can easily verify all this these are very simple from set theory you can verify all this okay now uh, here uh, i had discussed that uh, first application is multiplication rule so here we will talk about multiplication rule how it is coming uh, multiplication rule uh, it is just a restatement of definition of conditional probability what does definition of conditional probability it say that probability of a given b it is equal to a probability of a intersection b divided by probability of b divided by probability of b so if you take uh, probability of b left hand side what will what you will get 
and you know that probability of b is non zero greater than uh, greater than zero at least if you take this b this side bring it left hand side what you will get what you will get you will get probability of a intersection b is equal to probability of b into probability of a given b and remember that order is very much important why it is saying that when you are writing probability of a intersection b is equal to probability of b into probability of a given b it is saying that b occurred first b is given to us that means b is occurring first and then a is occurring a is happening we are first observing b and then we are going to observe a so there is a sequential pattern so multiplication rule is defining a way of computing joint probability of a and b in a sequential pattern they are first b is coming then a is coming probability of a given b and it is not like that uh, it is very much uh, a fixed order you can come up with uh, some some may come up with see uh, a first then you can observe b of occurrence of b so in, in that case what is the definition it would be what is the definition of joint probability it will be pro, it will be probability of a into probability of what b given a so it depends upon your approach which one you see first probability of b given a like uh, you can say this uh, screen is a this uh, screen is b okay so if someone is going to compute probability of a intersection b what would be approach for this side people this one is easy so they will compute probability of a into probability of b given a and for this side people they will compute probability of b first and probability of b into probability of a given b so that approach it, it depends upon your approach uh, uh, based on your position or based on your simplicity okay so that is the way to compute joint probability so this how does it look like how does it look like it is multiplication of two probability so that's why we say that it is a multiplication rule joint probability how you are computing it you are computing it as per sequential observation of the event sequential observation of the event and you are multiplying the corresponding probability and then you are getting probability of joint occurrence of those two event so this is the multiplication rule it is about two ev two events what about if you are having n number of events how you will compute so suppose you are having n number of events a1 a2 a3 up to an then how you will compute joint probability of joint occurrence of a1 a2 a3 that means joint means occurrence in together that means intersection so what is the probability of a1 intersection a2 intersection a2 uh, a3 like up to an so just here ordering is already given here 1 2 3 4 5 so by default you can say that a1 is occurring first a2 is occurring later then a3 n like that last is an so easily you can say that a1 is probability of a1 into probability of a2 given a1 why a1 occurred before before a2 so that's your conditional probability of a2 given a1 is coming and after that we are going to see occurrence of a3 so probability of a3 given a1 and a2 given a1 and a2 then you observe a4 when a4 occurs after a1 a2 and a3 so likewise then lastly you will compute probability of an given a1 a2 a3 up to n minus 1 uh, ask him to go and wash your face just go out and come back from wash your face okay so this is the way to compute joint occurrence of n number of event joint occurrence of n number of event okay have you seen any picture of uh, uh, some ancient uh, madras university student like that have you seen like recall ramanujam he was a student in uh, there can you recall that how how they used to make attention in the class or uh, uh, try to be attentive while in reading and otherwise you can follow swami vivekananda there are various people to, to follow for uh, being a nicer student and uh, being a good learner something like that okay
Now, so multiplication rule in uh, uh, you can see you see here in this picture. This is the picture uh, through branches wise. So sequence is very sequencing is very much important. So a1 is occurring first. So easily we can we we say that we can compute probability of a1 easily. Now after a1, a2 is occurring. So conditional probability of a2 given a1. And likewise, after that, A3 is coming. So it is a sequencing, sequencing. So probability of A3 given A1, A2. So I had told that comma is end, and end is intersection in set theory. So you can come up with. Sometimes you can write it end, A1 end, A2. What does it mean? A1 intersection, A2. And if you are in logic, then it would be conjunction. Intersection is uh, having same sign. It is coming like like this, this sign. Conjunction. It is very much in line with intersection. Very much in line with product. Multiplication in the real number. Multiplication. So all are very much uh, algebra kind of things we can call it. So same pictorial representation of the multiplication rule. I have given it here. So now we will go to solve a problem. Uh, any confusion regarding multiplication rule? It is simple. We are computing probability of joint occurrence through multiplication of corresponding probability through multiplication multiply by multiplying. So here there is a question in a factory there are 100 unit of a certain product and 5 of which are defective. We pick 3 uh, unit from the 100 unit at random. We are picking all this at random. Then what is the probability that none of them are defective? What is the probability that we have to compute none of them are defective? So how we will solve it? So we have to go in systematic way. First we have to define uh, event of interest. Okay. So consider uh, AI is as the event that IS chosen unit is not defective. What is another meaning of not defective? You can call it, it is good, good product, good unit. So you can call it not defective. In short word, not defective is taking uh, larger space than good. You can call it, it is a good product. You can call it good. Okay. So A1 is talking about IS chosen unit. There are three uh, unit you have uh, taken at random. You have picked at random. So A1 is talking about uh, that uh, first chosen unit is good or not defective. And uh, likewise, so none of them are defective, or you say that all of them are good. That will be denoted by. A1 intersection, A2 intersection, A3 intersection. It is talking about intersection. Okay, so it is, and we, here question has been asked that none of them are defective. That we denoted by A1 intersection, A2 intersection, A3. Okay, and we have to compute the probability of this one. Probability of this intersection that we have to compute. Joint occurrence of A1, A2, A3. We have designed this problem so that we can fit multiplication rule here. It is not like that. This problem only can be solved with the help of multiplication rule. Later we will say that another way of solving this one. So multiplication rule is one approach to solve this problem. Okay. So if you are going to solve multiplication, apply, uh, solve this problem using multiplication rule, you have to uh, compute the probability of AI. Yeah. Yes. Even in this question, we are picking three units at the time one by one or together. At random, together. So what what is happening? Yeah. Such information is you not know, one by one. It is not given there. So follow the statement. What is given there? Okay. Okay. Okay, so as a, a1 is the event of first non-effective, so non-defective chosen unit or good unit, you can call it good, good unit. So a, it is having how many options? If you are going to choose first uh, unit, how many options are there? 95. Why 95? Five are because five are defective. You are not going to choose defective one. So five. So what is the probability of a1? 95 by 100. Am I audible to last batch? I see one orange t-shirt, second line is very busy in cell phone. What is happening? You come here. Just stand up and come here. Orange t-shirt, I am asking you. Just you come here. If you are in this class, be attentive. Probability is not easy one. If you are attentive, then you will come to know and come to understand all these and then you will be uh, able to solve problem based on this. Don't use a headphone other or earphone something like that. If you are in class, be in class. Okay. 
सो प्रोबर्टी ऑफ ए वन इज नाइंटी फाइव बाई हंड्रेड देन वॉट इज हाउ यूल कंप्यूट प्रोबर्टी ऑफ ए कैन वी कंप्यूट प्रोबर्टी ऑफ ए टू डायरेक्टली नो इट इज नॉट बिकॉज हियर वी हैव गिवन ऑर्डरिंग अप्रोच ए वन देन ए टू सो हियर वी विल एबल टू कंप्यूट प्रोबर्टी ऑफ ए टू गिवन ए वन दैट मीन्स वट सिचुएशन इज इन वन हैज बीन ऑलरेडी सेलेक्टेड ओके देन वी आर गोइंग टू सेलेक्ट सेकेंड वन सो हाउ मेनी ऑप्शन आर देयर फॉर सेकेंड वन नाइंटी फोर Among good, we are going to select. It is related, and uh, up to, uh, uh, from uh, how many number of uh, uh, unit? Ninety-nine. So probability would be ninety-four by ninety-nine. It is not probability of A two. It is probability of A two given A one. One one product has been already selected. So likewise, what is the probability of A uh, three given A one A two? It would be ninety-three by ninety-eight. So what is the probability desired probability? Probability of intersection of a1, a2, a3. Probability of a1 into probability of a2 given a1 into probability of a3 given a1, a2. Okay. So just do multiply all these probability what you have computed, and this is the desired answer. Same problem you can look for alternative solution, but this is solved by uh, multiplication rule. Okay. Now we will talk about another problem, a grouping of graduate and under undergraduate students. So there are two kind of student. do you see here two kind of a student in this institute forget about branches do you see two kind of a student in this institute what are those graduate and undergraduate who are graduate student see these are simple like huh? professors are not a student <laughs> now as i am asking about a student it is pg and phd uh, if you go in western country pg and phd are student master and uh, doctoral are student all are falling in the graduate student category they have already done undergraduate so they they are going for that and our, uh, you people are in ug category undergraduate okay so two kind so here we will form groups this question is related to that a class consists of four graduate student and 12 undergraduate student and these are student okay these are randomly divided into four groups and each group contain four student and you have to compute the probability such that each group include a graduate student how you will solve it this can be also solved in later another approach later i will talk but right now here till now uh, we know multiplication rule definition of conditional probability so we will apply only those concept in order to solve this problem so how will solve it so i will discuss the solution here all about that let us first define uh, events okay so uh, we consider that uh, uh, the four graduate uh, student we give name to them first student we call it one second two third one is three and fourth one is four so these are the graduate student four okay and we are defining event like a1 a1 is saying that a student graduate student one and two both are in the different group a2 is talking about uh, graduate student one two and three all three are in different group a3 is talking about graduate student one two three four all are in different group okay so by default which things we have to compute we have to compute the probability of A three. If you talk about A three, A three by default it contains A one and A two. Okay, it is containing like that. So probability of A three is equal to probability of A one intersection A two intersection A three simply. So you can apply here multiplication rule. Directly you can apply in order to uh, get a formula pattern to compute probability of A three or desired probability. So how will compute this? That is A1, A2, A3. That is the things. So that one is a combinatorial problem. So, uh, if you are willing to compute probability of A1, it is saying graduate student one and two both are not in the same group. Both are in the different group. So that might be tricky. So in place of that, what you will do? You can compute probability of A1 complement. What does it say that two is in the group of 
one two is in in the group of one okay so if it is it is like that what is the probability of a1 complement so you will come come up with uh, yes there is a, you can say that there is a sample of size 4 there is a group of size what is the size 4 and it is one place is already taken by one graduate student one now remaining three we have to fill up from how many students we have to fill up four plus twelve sixteen one has been already accommodated accommodated so we have to fill up from the fifteen student so what is the approach approach is the graduate student two how many graduate uh, student two is only one so one c one one choose one and then the, this person ek one person with this two places will be filled now how many remaining places you will have two so two you can fill up from out of 14 actually 14 choose two what i have written here 14 c 2 okay 14 c 2 and uh, uh, what is the here denominator what will come here 15 choose 3 why first one is already accommodated by one a student graduate astronaut so this if you simplify this one what is the solution 3 by 15 if you simplify it is 3 by 15 you can do practice there in your notebook it is 3 by 15 so probability of a1 complement is 3 by 15 and it implies that what is the probability of a1 1 minus 3 by 15 what does it 12 by 15 so you got the prob probability of a1 in the similar argument you can compute probability of a2 complement given a1 not probability of a2 i am say i am not saying out or not probability of a2 complement here conditional probability is coming there do you see here or not so how you will compute it like that way so if you are this scenario if you talk it like this way so what a2 is a2 is talking about 1 2 and 3 are in different group then a2 complement what does it say a1 2 and 3 are not in different group so you can take cases okay you can take cases uh, you can say that 3 is in the group of 1 or 3 is in the group of 2 that kind of things you can come up with so if you are saying 3 is in the group of 1 what is the probability you will get 3 by 14 in the similar argument what is in the last case you uh, if it is say probability that a2 complement if 3 in the group of 1 and if 3 is in the group of 2 it will be 3 by 14 if 3 is in the group of 1 it will be 3 by 14 that option wise uh, you are getting two options so 3 by 14 3 by 14 two times so that's way 2 times 3 by, 3 by 14 so total 6 by 14 so argument if you try to relate argument it is very much similar to first argument 3 by 14 two times so the probability of a2 complement given a1 what is the answer 6 by 14 6 by 14 are you getting meaning of this or not not difficult uh, you have to do a little bit practice so here situation is like that a complement when you say a2 complement a2 complement it is saying that uh, here uh, actually you should recall little bit negation approach it is very much similar with complement negation approach so a2 is saying that uh, a student 1 2 and 3 are not in different group what is the negation of this one what is the negation of this it is saying that uh, are in different group are in the 1 2 3 are in the so you can say that another negation directly you can say that uh, it is 3 is in the group of 1 and 2 you can say that 
3 is in the group of 1 and 2. So, and 2 scenario is coming 1 and 2. So, that is where 2. So, so if you talk about uh, uh, you will limit up to if you are talking about uh, uh, this situation 1 and you are keeping 2 place 1 for 3 another 4 another 4 what another 4 uh, undergraduate students ok. Then you are taking another case here you are bringing 2 1 4 3 other 4 graduate. So, 2 option you come up with 2 options these 2 options are there either 3 in the group of 1 or 3 in the group of 2. If 3 in the group of 1 what are the possibility 3 by 4 same formula you can apply all this what I have taken now. you solve it all this competition again it will take it. So, you have to do little bit practice and likewise also you can do practice here and you will get again 3 by 4. So, 3 by 4 is coming 2 times. So, 2 into 3 by 4 oh sorry 3 by 14 sorry 3 by 14 so 6 by 14. So, this is the approach even same problem if you google in Aztec actions another solution would be there in Aztec action solution is there you can google it you will get another solution. So, which version suits you 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 can go for that there is no mass deduction for different methods all about that you have to solve problem in a right approach whatever method would be there. I will accept it there is no hard bound you have to solve that in a right approach that is the activity. So, in a stack exchange another answer is there you can find that answer as well. If you are uh, getting problem here you can find that answer ok. And likewise also we can compute uh, so um, you are getting uh, probability of A2 complement given A1 and by by using this you can get probability of A2 given A1 it is 8 by 14 that is 1 minus 6 by 14 it is 8 by 14. Likewise probability of A3 given A1 A2 is 4 by 13. So, what is the desired solution multiply all these probability and get the desired solution this is the desired solution. So, here question main trick of the question is computing the probability of A1 probability, computing the probability of A2 given A1 computing probability of A3 given A1 A2. So, here their question is so, all about it is multiplication rule so, how you are applying multiplication. So, same multiplication rule uh, approach is applied there in a stack exchange as well ok. You, cop you copy this question put in Google search and you will uh, put also a stack exchange it will lead towards that website ok. And if you face any problem let me know I will uh, share that link ok. So, this one is the second question now we are going to talk about the second application of a conditional probability second application it is also very much interesting any issue till now issue is that uh, you have to be very good in counting principle. So, everywhere we are applying combinatorial kind of approach principle of counting we are applying. So, that here so here everywhere we have gone through a finite sample space finite sample space situation that is way. Now, next we are uh, going to discuss about total probability and Bayes rule everyone might have already heard those things total probability and Bayes rule. So, when you are going to discuss total probability and Bayes rule with the help of conditional probability or definition of conditional probability you need to recall partition of the sample space. You have to partition a given sample space into n number of sub region n number of sub partition n number of sub region. So, how we can partition? So, partition again I am saying that when you discuss about partition it must satisfy the partitioning member must satisfy two property. First property is mutually disjoint and second property is totally exhaustive in nature. So, if you are saying that the event and the partition member should come from the sample space of the experiment it must come from. So, suppose we are taking partition member that B1, B2, B3 up to Bn. Uh, from the sample space in order to define a partition of the sample same sample space then when these would be form a partition for sample space omega when these b i s are mutually disjoint what does it mean intersection between any two b i s must be phi for i is not equal to j when i is equal to j what would be it would be the same set. So, intersection of a set with itself is always the same set. 
So that condition we are not taking. So if you are taking n to different uh, uh, member of the partition, there would be no common outcome. Mutually disjoint. This we call it mutually disjoint. Okay. The first property of being uh, partition or defining a partition. The second property is collectively or totally exhaust in nature. What does it mean? If you take union of all those partition members, it will give back our sample space. That means, uh, these partition member, they are taking care all possible outcomes of the random experiment. It is not like that we are leaving a uh, outcome. It is, it is taking care of that. Apart from that, C is redundant kind of uh, condition. You can miss it, there is no issue. Why I am saying that you can miss it? By default, when you do partition, you will not take a partition member which is having no outcome. You always take members which are having at least, which one is having at least one outcome. That scenario must be there. It is So, that is where probability of each uh, uh, partition member must be greater than 0. And that is the third property and that one is very much uh, redundant. You can leave it, there is no any issue. It is understood when you are doing partitioning. If you are forming a group, is it possible that there would be a group with no member? That would be not a group. Okay. So, a group must contain at least one member now. So, like that scenario is coming here. So, now, uh, if you are having a partition of a sample of space omega, can we define partition of an event from the partition of a sample of space? Can we define partition of an event A? Yes, we can define. How? It is very simple to extend the, uh, you can just uh, do use the these axioms of partition and you can get the partition of A. How? So, if you are saying that A is any event in the random, same random experiment, then mutually disjoint of B i is also implied, it is implying that uh, intersection of A with B i is having mutually disjoint nature. So, this one is very easy to prove. This one. Do you want, do, can you see in like in pictorial way, you can see it like this way. So, this one is your sample of space. What is meaning of partition? You are dividing the sample of space or this region into n number of sub region. These are the Okay, the last region we call it here. So, first region call it uh, B1, second region is B2, and the last region call it Bn. Okay, this is the partition of a sample of space. Apart from the boundary, there is no sharing thing. Apart from the boundary, there is no sharing thing. So, and now, you come up with an event, call it A. So, this is A. Okay. This is, you call it A. If you talk about partition, this partition member B i, try to look from A perspective. What is this region? What you will call this region? This region is A intersection B 1. A intersection B1. What about this region? A intersection, okay, call it A intersection B2. Do you see any common element between A intersection B1 and A intersection B2? Do you see any common element? Common outcome? Do you see? No. Why? Because those are partition of sample of space. From there, these are borrowed. So, same proof uh, what in the first I had told. A intersection B2. And what is this region? This region from the perspective of A, you call it A intersection Bn. Okay, A intersection B n. So, you can observe easily A intersection, A intersection B i's are mutually 
disjoint don't say mutually exclusive when you are saying mutually ex exclusive when probability of occurrence of both would be zero Pro probability of joint occurrence is zero then mutually exclusive involve probability but disjoint is not involving probability okay are you getting disjoint is saying that there is no common outcome though there there is no common outcome intersection outcome that disjoint is so the first property is very much visible from here this what about second property anyone can say that uh, that second property is not visible or it is visible is it visible or not from the diagram if you take union of these portions this portion intersected with a what it will give to us it will give to not sample space sample space will be given by intersection of no say union of bi union of uh, bi but uh, if you take intersection of uh, sorry union of a intersection bi what it will it will give it will give a it will give a the second property is talking about same so intersection so union of a inter, a intersection b1 union of a intersection union of this with this with this with this it give us to a it is give so and also as all bi's are having at least one outcome so a intersection by that will also have at least one outcome so the probability is non zero probability of uh, intersection bi is also non zero so in together so you can say that it is forming a partition so if you take a intersection b1 a intersection b2 and you will go like that a intersection bn it is forming a partition of which which thing it is forming a partition of which thing omega or a a it is forming a partition of it is forming a partition of omega sorry a it introduce a partition of a they have partition so and what are bi's bi's are partition of the sample space i am from the partition of sample space you come up with partition of the event a partition of a okay so you got this from the uh, starting from the partition of sample of space omega you can come up with partition of an event of interest a by using same bi's okay and graphically you can see it like that if you are taking a sample of space which has been partitioned into the three region b1 b2 b3 and you come up with an event a then event a is also having a partition a1 a2 a3 what is a1 a1 is a intersection b1 a2 is a intersection b2 a3 is a intersection b3 so you can easily see the this see all these visible okay so this is the idea of partitioning okay so once we are having idea of partitioning can we compute the probability of a from this scenario of partition these are the uh, these are very helpful in bayes theorem also in total probability first we have to talk about total probability like in bayes theorem always uh, Uh, it is solving in inferential problem like if there is cause that cause will lead to effect okay somehow you come to know about uh, effect can you say that which which cause may lead to that effect so that scenario is very much common in medic uh, medical diagnosis or medical sector like that someone uh, came up with uh, diagnosis that uh, this per one person is having cancer so cancer can be caused by various things it is not like that one thing various thing 
your food habit, your uh, sleeping habit, your working habit, or your or various other things, daily habit, various things would become drinking habit, various things may lead to cancer. So, if uh, it it has been detected and uh, detected that someone is having cancer, then what are the scenario that will lead toward cancer? You have to compute now. You have to know. So, if fact is already to you, you come to know through medical diagnosis that 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 we call it a fact or A, that event A. Now, you have to find the probability of B i given A. You can say that you can compute probability of A given B i that that because you know the pro, you have already computed probability of A. So, probability of A, A given B i you can compute. Now, the reverse question is what is the probability of B i given A? Why you are computing? Because you will get medicine in order to control that cause. B i is the cause no? that leads to effect. So, it is not like that every cause may have lead to cancer. So, if you are uh, having that situation, then what will happen? Do you have to take lot of medicines. If you are taking lot of medicines, each medicine is having a side effect that may lead a big problem. So, that is the, so in that we call it Bayes theorem. So, we will discuss. So, before Bayes theorem, we have to talk about total probability. That means, you have to compute the probability of A, the probability of effect. In all possible scenario, you have to compute probability of effect. How we can compute pro, uh, total probability or total uh, law of total probability also you can call it. So, we are coming it like this way. So, most application of a conditional probability uh, like it is total probability or Bayes theorem, all these are dealing with partition of the sample space. Okay. So, partition you are saying that these are the partition member, it is defining a partition of the sample space then it must satisfy two conditions B i are mutually disjoint. That means, uh, B i intersection B j it is empty and uh, for i is not equal to j uh, and B i are totally exhaustive. If you take union of B i it will give back to sample space that we had already discussed. I am summarizing this. Now, I'm, we are coming to compute probability of A. So, we had already seen that uh, uh, probability of A uh, that partition of sample aspects also introduce partition of A. So, what is the probability of A? You, you see it here like this. Okay. Here A is coming. You had already defined a partition. Okay. You had defined partition. So, this one is bigger one is sample aspects. Uh, the a smaller one within sample space we call it A, uh, this one is B 1, this one is B 2, this partition is B 2 okay. and this partition is B n. Okay. So, if I am asking to compute uh, this region is A okay, up to this. So, if I am asking to compute A, so the second property of partition of A you had already seen that A you are writing it as how A intersection B1 and you are taking union of this with A2, this region. This one is A intersection, uh, this region is A intersection B1. Now, you come to this region, This re what is name of this region? A intersection B2, A intersection B2, then you will come to find the last region A intersection BN. Okay. And do you see any common outcome between these? There is no common outcome. All these are mutually disjoint. So, if you compute probability of A, what would be probability of A? What is the probability of A? It is sum of probability of A intersection B i some i varies from 1 to n. Same thing I have written it here. 
प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ए इज इक्वल टू प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ए इंटरसेक्शन बी आई आई वेरीज फ्रॉम वन टू एन ओके सम ऑफ दिस प्रोबेबिलिटी ना यू नो अबाउट मल्टीप्लीकेशन रूल हाउ यू विल राइट प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ए इंटरसेक्शन बी आई विच वन यू ऑब्जर्व फर्स्ट ए और बी आई या आई एम से आस्किंग दैट विच यू ऑब्जर्व फर्स्ट ए और बी आई बी आई दो हजार द कॉजेज एंड दो हजार इंट्रोड्यूसिंग सीनारियो दो हजार इंट्रोड्यूसिंग सीनारियो ए इज द फैक्ट दैट और कंक्लूजन अफेक्ट और कंक्लूजन इफेक्ट और इफेक्ट ऑल्सो यू कैन कॉल इट देर आर वेरियस नेम सिनोनिमस अफेक्ट इफेक्ट और कंक्लूजन सो यू ए यू आर ऑब्जर्विंग लेटर सो बी आई इज आर द सीनारियो एंड इट इज यू हैव टू बी वेरी फोकस टू ऑब्जर्व द सीनारियो इफ यू आर ट्राइंग टू अवॉइड सीरियस डिजीज यू हैव टू बी वेरी फोकस बट पीपुल जनरली दे हैपन टू बी वेरी केयरलेस लाइक वी आर नॉट ऑब्जर्विंग अबाउट सीनारियो बट इफ यू आर गोइंग टू डायग्न डाय ट्रीट दैट ट्रीटमेंट और इलनेस और समथिंग लाइक दैट यू हैव टू बी वेरी मच फोकस सो यू हैव टू ऑब्जर्व द सीनारियो डॉक्टर्स आर दे डूइंग दैट दे आर वेरी मच एक्सपर्ट इन दैट ओके सो दे आर डूइंग दैट सो here you have you are observing bi first so the probability of bi into probability of a given bi okay doctor will say that okay they know that this cause may lead to this effect or this conclusion so eating this may lead to cancer or drinking this may lead to cancer or that kind of things doctor can say that okay what are the possible causes so it is coming from ex doctor is expert that one doctor he is an expert expert in that category so he through expert we come up with scenario and if in another domain other expert will come up with those scenario bi is our scenario we call it scenario cause or various things are there so here we are competing to finally probability a like this one. is it clear to everyone how to compute total probability why total world is coming here we are competing probability of an effect in all possible scenario and summing it up summing it up to get probability of a in the uh, framework of total probability so that okay it is not like that total probability of probability of all the events it is not like that okay probability of outcome in a scenario under the expert uh, suggestion it is not like that scenario will define as per your choice Yeah, question will give some scenario. Question: If you are, you have to observe closely, then you will come to know. So very simple question. I have taken it. Manufacturing factory problem. So, so there are uh, three machines in a factory. Uh, all the three three machines, they are manufacturing uh, various equipment or components, something like that. Like if you go any automobile company factory, is it like that same machine will produce uh, nut bolt, a screw, and other part of fix excel or something like that so there are various machine now something like that and later uh, people try to assemble all those in together and you are getting a bike or vehicle or something like that like in computer also you can say that various machines are there to manufacture various component or equipment of the product so like that so here same situation is there so machine one is uh, manufacturing type one kind of uh, component machine two type two kind kind of things so uh, machine one making 60% of the part 60% of the part machine two makes 30% of the parts and machine three makes 10% of the part so in 100% contribution area 0.6 60% is contributed by machine one 60 uh, so 30% by machine two and then you can convert all these in probability these are the scenario given to you these are the scenario so who will know scenario worker will know or owner of the or manager manager of the manager of the factory he may have idea manager uh, he having uh, that uh, manager is more uh, what we call a uh, skilled or uh, having managing capital uh, managing capability like that more uh, degree or something like that also can more a st uh, study or more, something like that you can say that Okay. Now the second level of information is given that of the part M1 makes seven percent are defective. 
the how much uh, equipment made by M1 among them 7% are defective, M2 making 15% defective, M3 making 70, no sorry 30% defective. What does it mean? That means it is all about dealing with defective product. You have to find defective product and have to throw it out. You don't you have to know, you have to compute what is the probability of defective out item there in that factory. If you do not know, it will be very difficult uh, to run your business. Okay. So, that means uh, M1 is making 7 percent defective, that means that one is a conditional probability D given M1, that means defective product made by machine 1 and defect, D probability of D given M2, that means uh, conditional probability a defective product made by M machine 2 uh, like that. So, this probability, this data are given to you. Your question is that compute the probability of defective parts made by the manufacturing factory that you have to compute. So, how you will solve it? Just by using total probability, total probability theorem. So, here it is coming like that. Computation is very simple. Probability of D is equal to probability of D is equal to probability of M1 into probability of D given M1 plus probability of M2 into probability of D given M2 plus probability of uh, D M3 into probability of D given M3. So, you are having a sample of space okay, and this sample of space has been partition into 3 region M1, M2, M3 okay and where is D? 100 percent products uh, are coming in this sample of space okay and where is D? D is a subset of omega. These are the defective product. D means defective product. So, you have to compute the probability of defective product made by the manufacturing fa uh, factory. So, how you will compute it? Through this total law. Did you get meaning of this? Okay. So, first example, we will go for second example, uh, chase tournament problem. Okay. It is also very interesting problem. So, you enter a chase tournament where your probability of winning a game is 0.3 against half of the player. That means, against 50 percent play, player, you are having probability of winning how much? 0.3 then you are having probability of winning 0.4 against quarter of the player. What does it mean? 50 percent regarding uh, 0.3 quarter, 25 percent uh, regarding uh, 25 percent it is 0.4 uh, regarding rest of 25 percent, what is the uh, probability of winning 0.5. So, you have already divided sample of space. What is the sample of space? Collection of all players, chess player, not all player, chess player. So, this chess player you have divided into three categories. So, question is also giving idea of coming with partition of the sample of space. Now, you play a game against a randomly chosen uh, opponent, then you have to compute what is the probability of winning, you can call it W, you have to compute the probability of W. Okay. So, first we have to come up with partition, this partition having simple notation, you can call it T1, T2, T3 or better is general notation B1, B2, B3 is general notation, you can go for that. So, you are having partition of the all the chess player under consideration have been partitioned into 3. What is the probability of B1? What is the probability of B1? 50 percent, 50 percent now, 50 percent uh, against 50 percent, first 50 percent uh, player you are having probability of winning 0.3. So, that means, it has a part, it has already partitioned those uh, chess player. In, those are coming in type 1, you can call it type 1 player or type 2 player, type 3. So, T1, T2, 3 if you give, then it, it, get, it may give better representation. Okay. So, so, and what is the probability of B2? Next 25, once 50 percent, first 50 percent you have already uh, called it type 1, then next 25 percent will be type 2 that is the probability of B2 is uh, 
two five, and what is B three probability of B three? It is last twenty five percent, point two five. So fifty plus twenty plus twenty, it is total hundred percent. So a complete partition. Okay, there is no issue in the problem. Now next, uh, what is <laughs> event here of interest? Uh, event of interest is probability of winning. So we have to compute the probability of winning. winning. So we have to see winning winning scenario in this partition approach. Probability of winning from the type against the type one, and that probability is given 0.3. You can see it is given here. Probability of winning against type two. What is that probability? It is 0.4. So these are conditional probability. Remember that these are this probability is what probability of A given B1. B1 is talking about type one players. Okay, uh, this one is what? This one is probability of A given B2. A given. All these information are in in the given question, and this one is probability of A given B3. So all these are given to you. So you have already converted all those in given information in the probability framework. Okay, now you come to find here probability of A by using law of total probability. This is the law of total probability. So you try to so this one is your this one is your A. So this one is A inter A intersection B1. This one is A intersection B2. This one is A intersection B3. What I have written here? A. Okay, B3. So compute it, and the final answer is 0.3. Okay, this is the way to compute uh, total probability. Okay. Now, last application of the now there are many other application, not last. Uh, the interesting one is Bayes theorem. Do we have time? Yeah, few more minutes. Then it is Bayes theorem. Again, I will say that Bayes theorem is re-statement of conditional probability. Who is doing that snoring? Uh, re-statement of the definition of conditional probability. It may lead to Bayes rule. How? So we know that uh, we have already seen this is the re-statement of conditional probability as a multiplication rule. Everyone have already seen, no? So here this say that we are observing A first, and then we are observing B. So probability of A into probability of B given A. So we are writing joint occurrence of A and B is probability of A into probability of B given A. Now here in this scenario, this one is for this set people, and this one is for that set people. Okay. So probability of B into probability, probability of A given B. This scenario, you got it. Okay. So either write this or write this. If if you are having this situation, then what you will say? What you will say that? How you will balance both sides? So balance is coming like that. If probability of A is given, now probability of B is given. Okay. Then you have to comp compute probability of B given A. What is the probability of B given A? So probability of B is coming from given scenario, or you say that that is the prior partial uh, partial information of prior information. Prior at, at first from the question itself we come up with partition that we call it prior information. So prior information, probability of B is given to us. Now, if probability is, probability of B is given to us, and we come up with uh, some idea of a fact or conclusion, then based on given conclusion or a fact, what is the updated probability of scenario? That at the beginning, what scenario you got that might be wrong or that might be right. If it is right. Then you will get improvement in the updated scenario, probability of updated scenario. If the scenario expert has given or doctor has given that one is not right. If that doctor is not a good doctor, then definitely you might be aware of that where patient are going. Okay, so if that doctor is not a good doctor, that scenario might be wrong scenario. So your probability updated probability it will decrease. 
it will decrease so that you have to compute. So, this we call it probability of B given A is updated probability of the scenario and updated probability or we call it posterior probability, posterior, okay, updated or posterior. So, you can give name to this, you call it updated or better word is posterior. Sometimes this cursor is very slippery. Here, this difficult to write. Posterior, okay. Uh, posterior probability of scenario. Uh, posterior probability. Simply call it posterior probability. Posterior probability. Okay. And what is this B? This we call it prior probability. At the prior, it is given to us based on expertise or something like that in prior. Okay, prior, prior probability. P R O R. Prior probability. Now tell me, everyone might be watching a lot of court drama movies, something like that. What we call it? Probability of A given B, and what is we call it probability of A? What is probability of A? Probability of A given B, we call it likelihood of A under the scenario B. Likelihood. Okay, it is not giving a complete probability distribution. It is talking about all uh, likelihood, likelihood of observing A under the scenario of B, likelihood. Likelihood word you all might have heard, somewhere you might have heard. Likelihood, I have already written everything I think, you will see, call it likelihood of A under the scenario. A under this scenario or condition on B under this scenario under B under this scenario B. Okay, and what is probability of A? What is probability of A? What you will call someone has already cancer or something like that. Uh, I would like to pray that no one will have cancer. Just for example, I am taking all this. Okay, those looks very simple example. Uh, so probability is what? Uh, probability of A is what? It is probability of effect. So it is evidence. We call generally it is evidence kind of. So you will call it evidence. This one is evidence. Or in Hindi you can call it for such. And Urdu, what you what you will call? What is evidence in Urdu? Generally, people are using a lot. Sabut. Okay, so that one is not a Hindi word. So uh, we have to generalize it. This scenario, what we got it? Probability, uh, probability of posterior uh, uh, posterior probability. We have to generalize it. So we come up with a partition of a sample space. B1, B2 up to Bn, okay. And based on that, uh, and we are having an event A, or you call it conclusion, it would be, or you call it uh, effect. So we are willing to compute probability of B is given A, okay. This one is updated probability of B i or posterior probability of B i. How you will compute it? As per definition of B. Uh, Conditional probability, it will be probability of BI intersection A divided by probability of A and a probability of BI. How you will write using multiplication rule? Someone will say that why not I will write it probability of A into probability of uh, BI given A. What is meaning of that? We are willing to compute probability of BI given A. So we should not go in that direction. Uh, our direction is now it is fixed as per uh, evident of scenario. Scenario is coming first. 
so that's why probability of bi given a is written as probability of b i into probability of a given bi this we call it prior probability at the beginning at the first uh, instant we come up with some kind of information of the scenarios so that is the probability that one is defining probability and into likelihood of seeing that conclusion or effect under that scenario okay divide by evidence Prob that we call it probability of a so prob evidence how you are collecting you have to look for all the possible scenario now that you are that means you are collecting probability of evidence through or simply evidence through total probability that you are computing this is the probability of a total probability so here uh, in this uh, uh, formula of this one is the act actual formula of uh, Bayes rule it is containing three things first probability of bi that we call it prior probability second probability of a given bi that we call it likelihood of occurrence of a under the scenario of bi and probab last one that we are willing to compute that we say that probability of bi given a we call it posterior probability or updated probability we call it this is Bayes theorem okay so also you can call it cause what are the cause bi's are the cause so this you can call it cause and what is effect a is the effect this you, a is the effect a you can call it effect okay so once you have already seen effect so find the probability of cause with respect to the given effect or computed generally effect would be not given it can you can compute or it, you can estimate that is the Bayes rule okay so we don't have much time in the next class I will take various examples there are various examples if you go and find my book there in uh, archive you will get a lot of examples there and in solution also with solution also you will get